Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Peter's. It's good to be in God's house. It's good to see you here and to be able to gather and worship our God. As we worship our God and we, we focus on, on God's word for us from, from Romans chapter 3, and we think about how we're, we're really all in the same boat, are we? And, and so as Christians to, to realize that, that, that we're all in the same boat as far as our, our sin and and there is no difference, all false uh, sin that falls short of the glory of God. But then we're all saved in the same way, too, through faith in Christ Jesus. And so we, we rejoice in that unity on, on who we have as a Savior. Everything that you need to follow along with the, the service will be projected on the screen. We'll be following an abbreviated uh, uh, version of, of common service that starts on page 15 in the, the red hymnal there. But what we'll do is we'll have uh, only two hymns there, and we'll have the, the readings and uh, um, the sermon as well. There, so I invite you to, to join with me uh, on the, 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 the liturgy and the, the confession of sins from the, the common service as it's projected on the screen. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy, Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. At this time, we join in our first hymn, 735 Speak, O Lord.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God's word for us from Deuteronomy chapter 11, selected verses. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land that the Lord swore to give to your forefathers, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. See, I am setting before you today blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. The curse if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods which you have not known. The word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from Romans chapter 3, selected verses. Now, a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely through His grace, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in His blood. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel comes from Matthew chapter 7, selected verses. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus by the fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons, and perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. 
When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their teachers of the law. This is the gospel of our Lord, who may be seen. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Humans have, have such a, a powerful drive to, to distinguish themselves from the pack. You know what I'm talking about. Whether it's, it's, it's distinguishing yourself at, at your work, whether it's, it's showing to the world that, that your salary is something be considered, whether it's showing off what car you drive, or, or maybe it's on the, the, the field of competition where you show to the world when you break that record that you're the best that ever was. Maybe you want to make your contribution to the, to the world at large and, and have your name on discovery. Have your name on a breakthrough in science or, or medicine, technology, something where the world can look back and say humanity was changed. The course of history was changed because of their contribution. Their distinguishing remark. We, we want to, to, to make our, our mark on history. Some people do it through politics, through, through gathering power and, and influence so that you'll be in the history books as someone that was a mover and a shaker. That your decisions had weight, had import, had an impact. All you have to do is, is look at things like pyramids and tombs and monuments to see that this is something that has been going on as long as there have been humans that have been staring down this eventual day of their own demise. I wanted to leave something on this planet after they're gone. Something to show that they were more than just your run-of-the-mill human. Hear so much about distinguishing ourselves, and, and even as as Lutherans and as churchgoers, we still feel that temptation, don't we? Maybe we like seeing where our name falls on the, the contributions list. That we are one of the ones that really helps keep this church running. Or, or maybe it's by having your name on a bunch of different committees that, that you're involved, that you contribute. You pull your own weight and then some. We like to, to distinguish ourselves. To think that, that we have something that others don't. And while it's true that, that people are very different, that, that you, the, the, the people that you meet, everyone is, is distinguishable in some way. There's something about you that no one else has. And yet, if you distill it down, there are some things about humans that we all share. There are some things about us where we're all in the same boat. And then Paul providing them an introduction to him, to himself, to his teaching for the Roman Christians. He tells us a couple of ways that we're all in the same boat. He tells us there is no difference for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. You see, as much as we want to distinguish ourselves by our actions, by our, our aptitude, by our records, our bank accounts, our impact on the history books, there is something about every human being that has ever lived right up to our initial, original parents of Adam and Eve. That's true about us. We're sinful. 
We fall short of the glory of God. God is perfect and we are not. Thanks to Adam and Eve, we can say that. sin provides this gulf, this chasm, this, this barrier between us and our God that we cannot bridge on our own. There is no difference for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. But look at the world around us and see how people try to distinguish themselves even on the spiritual side of things. And try to say, see, what I'm doing is something that God will take notice of. See, I'm someone that God should let into heaven. I'm a good person. It doesn't matter what religion it is. It doesn't matter what path you follow. People are constantly trying to find this, this right set of rules and guidelines. If you can just find the right combination of righteous acts, righteous thoughts, righteous words. If you can just figure out the code of perfection, figure out the way to please God by what you do, then you can rest assured in your salvation. I think even good Lutherans can fall into it a little bit. When we sin, and instead of, instead of focusing on Jesus and his forgiveness and, and repenting of that sin and, and, and clinging to him for forgiveness, where instead we try to salve our conscience by all the good things we do, by looking at, at all of our accomplishments and our, our spiritual successes and saying, God will forgive this one. Or looking at our, our, our less sanctified brothers and sisters and thinking I'm not as bad as they are. But that's not really the solution, is it? As much as we try to distinguish ourselves from others, as much as we try to distinguish ourselves before our God, our God looks at us and sees us all in the same sinful boat that's careening towards eternal death. We are all in the same boat as far as our sinful is. But that's not the end of the story, is it? and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. While we're off trying to distinguish ourselves through all of our dirty, sinful rags of our own righteousness, our God had an actual solution to the problem and sent His Son, who was actually able to live that perfect life for you, who died an innocent death for you, who rose for you, who started a church so that you could hear about it someday in this unbroken chain of the gospel being spread from one person to the other, all the way from the lips of Jesus, all the way down until your parents, a friend, the waters of baptism, when God reached out and brought you into his family, rescued you. And so as Christians, we realize that there's another way that we're all united, that we're all in the same boat, and it's how we're saved. Regardless of our human accomplishments, regardless of how great we think we are, or on the other side, regardless of how lousy we think we are. Because Satan doesn't care how it gets us. So if Satan can get you to dwell on your sin and think, I'm not worth God's time. That half-truth, right? We know that we're sinful. We know that we don't deserve what Jesus has given us. And so there's that kernel of truth. And yet it's still a lie because it's trying to focus on you and your sin. And somehow that sin disqualifies you from the very solution to that. We are all in the same boat as far as our Savior. We don't have to focus 
on what we do, on our own righteousness. And whether it's trusting in that righteousness or whether it's despairing of that righteousness and wondering what our God sees in us. We're all in the same boat as far as our salvation. Justified freely by His grace. That grace, that, that word that, that gets thrown around a lot, but we understand God's grace as His undeserved love for sinners. We know that our God loves us. We don't always grasp the why. It doesn't always make sense because we have nothing that we bring to the table. We're all in the same boat as far as our sinfulness. And yet our God freely and fully offers that forgiveness. And there's a comfort there. There's a comfort in knowing that we are all in the same boat as far as our, our spiritual matters are concerned. When you despair of your own works, your own righteousness, it frees up a whole lot of time to focus on Jesus. And in Him you will never be put to shame. But we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Just as if I never sinned. Our God looks at us and sees Jesus' perfection instead of our sin, so we're all in the same boat of having that beautiful, perfect, spotless robe of righteousness that is our entry into eternal life. And it goes beyond just the people that you see at church, doesn't it? We know that Jesus shed his precious blood for every single soul that we meet. So every single person that you meet, that you see, that you interact with, that you work with, is someone that Jesus shed his precious blood for. And since we are all in the same boat, since we know that we don't deserve the forgiveness that our Savior has won for us, since we know that the person that we're talking to doesn't deserve it, there's no room for pride or arrogance. There's no room for, there, there's no room for, for deciding who we think is worthy. Jesus' forgiveness. But as we share the good news of Jesus, we share it as one beggar telling another where to find bread. Jesus calls himself the bread of life. And it's true. Because this life is not just a life that, that goes from a period when you're, you're born until when you die, but it is an eternal life that stretches on forever with our God. And it is our mission to share that life-giving bread to everyone that we need. Since we know that we're all in the same boat, it makes our mission pretty easy. We don't have to, to sift through and, and narrow down the candidates and try to figure out who is our most likely for accepting the message and, 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 and being successful. That's sort of diving into that, that, that human nature with it, isn't it? Where we want to distinguish ourselves, even distinguish ourselves as we carry out the Great Commission. No, we don't have to worry about the numbers. We don't have to worry about our human idea of success, do we? Because every soul matters. Every soul is precious to a God who died for them. It makes a difference in that person's eternal life. And so maybe it's one person, maybe it's two, maybe it's a hundred. The numbers themselves are not where we measure our success. But instead, we focus on simply carrying out the calling that our God has given us. The free gift of His grace that is ours, that's available to every single person you meet. It's the most important message you'll ever get. It's the most important message you'll ever share. So I share. Let's turn to those that we know, those that, that, that weigh upon us, share the good news of Jesus, that, that only solution for the sin that's, that's dragging on their conscience as well. Let's share the, the, the good news of Jesus with
with sinners like us, with soul bought, blood bought, sinners like us. So that someday we can all be in the same boat of rejoicing with our God in heaven. He's the one who calls us to faith. He's the one who gives us the mission. He's the one who sustains us. So let's be faithful in our mission and share the good news of Jesus with others so that we can share the joys of Jesus someday in heaven. Amen. And may the peace which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we'll join in our next hymn in 293. We join in our next hymn. Open our eyes to see the spiritual dangers facing those who do not yet trust you as Savior and Lord. Move us to share with them the hope of unending life we have in you. Go with us into our world and support us in all that we do to your glory. And dear Lord, hear us as we also pray the prayer that you have taught us, the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor.
said Mark in, in memory of Carolyn. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure she's on it, looking at us and smiling now with this wonderful gift that, that's been added to our church. So uh, we're still in, in, in the uh, area of fine tuning it. So if you think something is too loud or you think something isn't loud enough, please let me know and, uh, so we can get everything just right. Any questions? All right. I'll, I'll dismiss you too. <laughs>